How you doing, movie fans? And welcome back to another week here at The Potato, where we're just a whirlwind of movie news and reviews from a couch potato. So the 1980 film The Shining, directed by Stanley Kubrick, based on the novel by Stephen King, is considered a classic. But if there's one person who would disagree with that, it's Stephen King, who from the moment of its release to this very day has had no trouble talking about how much he just didn't like the film. And while Kubrick had stated that he overall enjoyed the book, he did have some comments about it that I don't think Stephen King took too kindly to. So today, we're going to dive into The Shining and the criticisms that both King and Kubrick have made regarding it. Let's take a look. Let's start with Stephen King. If you Google how many novels he's written since the start of his career in 1959, the answer is at least 97. That also doesn't account for the number of short stories that he's written, which is estimated to be somewhere around 200. So I think he's definitely beyond being called an experienced writer at this point. Among his novels, he considers his 1977 novel The Shining to be one of his most personal stories, which was inspired by a night in September of 1974 when he and his wife were the only guests at the Stanley Hotel in Estes Park, Colorado, just a day before it was closing for the winter. He felt the hotel was the perfect setting for a ghost story. The book also tackles some of the more personal demons that King struggled with in his own life, such as alcoholism. So his expectations of how this movie should turn out were probably already sky high. Kubrick decided he wanted to tackle the adaption after reportedly ordering his staff to bring him stacks of horror books to read in his office, where his secretary would constantly then hear the sound of each book being rejected as it was thrown at the wall and into a rejected pile. Eventually, the noise of a book hitting the wall stopped, and when his secretary opened the door, she found that Kubrick was reading The Shining. Now, I don't know if that story is true, but it does sound like something he would have done. Stanley Kubrick, the director, is widely considered one of the most influential directors of all time and delivered arguably what many consider is the best science fiction movie of all time in 2001 A Space Odyssey. But Stanley Kubrick, the man, was a complicated person to say the least. If you were in the small circle of people he trusted, you were treated like family. However, outside of that, many called him distant and recluse. He liked to do things his way. He didn't care how many takes it took and would do everything in his power to get the performance out of you that he wanted, even if that meant depriving you of sleep. Roll video. Now, even though Kubrick liked the shiny novel, he considered it a bit sloppy and felt that diving deep into the characters' backgrounds and past issues wasn't necessary in order to advance the story. King would disagree. With the removal of these backstory elements, King called the film cold and quote, like a big, beautiful Cadillac with no engine inside. King also took a lot of issue with how the characters were portrayed in the film by saying, quote, Jack Torrance has no arc in that movie. Absolutely no arc at all. When we first see Jack Nicholson, he's in the office of Mr. Ullman, the manager of the hotel. And you know, then he's crazy as a shithouse rat. All he does is get crazier. In the book, He's a guy who's struggling with his sanity and finally loses it. To me, that's a tragedy. In the movie, there's no tragedy because there's no real change, end quote. And he certainly wasn't too happy about how Wendy was portrayed in the film either by saying, quote, she's basically just there to scream and be stupid. And that's not the woman I wrote about, end quote. Okay, I feel like I'm on both sides with this. Because we can all agree that King and Kubrick are, well, slash were, masters of their craft. But there are two totally different crafts here. King is known for being an author, mostly, and Kubrick known for directing films. And when you're turning a book into a movie, unless you want it to be four hours long, certain sacrifices have to be made, and that usually involves the character development side of things taking a hit. So I can understand why Kubrick might have felt that those extra elements were unnecessary for film, but not overall, because with a book, all you have is words. In film, you have visual cues and body language that you can go off of, but with a book, you need that extra detail. That way the reader can feel more connected to the character. I just wish that both of them recognize that about the other's work. Well, everybody, thank you for watching. I really appreciate it, and I will see you soon. Thanks. Potato.